Hello everyone. On today's video, we're going to be starting a short series of non-precision instrument approaches. Now, as I've grown as a pilot and gotten real-world experience, I think these things start to leak into the flights, and I just figured it'd be worth sharing them with you. For the aircraft today, by the way, we're flying the Mooney 20 Romeo. Uh, this is one of the named Moonies. If you're curious where we are, uh, we're up here in uh, New Hampshire with holy scary mountains and a lovely little space right there below us. Let's get started. So the first things first, uh, when you're doing non-precision approaches, or really any sort of instrument approaches, it's really critical that you limit the amount of things you have to do at one time. Now, when I first went into these things, uh, especially when I was flying in the flight sim, I just say, oh, I'm just gonna kind of YOLO it and I'll line up at the ground and we'll just rush in and we'll kind of have everything. But I always found myself to be all over the sky. Uh, let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, disengage my automatic pilot. Uh, we're gonna pretend that we're approaching our final approach fix here. You know, everything's looking uh, pretty groovy. You know, we're looking down. All right, we're ready to start our approach down to the ground. Uh, we're gonna need to get about 600 feet per minute down. We're gonna need an airspeed of 90 knots. And of course, there's gonna be all sorts of clouds and all sorts of nastiness uh, bouncing us all over the place. So unfortunately, you know, as much as we'd love to just be able to kind of sink on in there, uh, we're probably not gonna get that. All right, so we approach our final approach fix. Uh, they say go, we go ahead and cut the throttle. All. We're just going to estimate, we're going to increase our RPM, we're going to push the nose down, we're going to try to get ourselves about 600 feet per minute is about what the Mooney works out to be, about 550, 600. And uh, so now I'm pulling the throttle down, you know, I'm in instrument approach mode, I'm trying to center my needles up real carefully here as I'm sort of coming down. I'm still going really, really fast right now, uh, doing about 130. I can't even put my wheels down on the Mooney yet. Getting bounced around, nothing's new. You know, I decide to be aggressive. I pop out my speed brakes. It, you know, helps slow me down a little bit. Ah, oh, sweet, I get under 120. I'm still struggling to keep my 100. Oh, oh, now air traffic control is calling me. Uh, they're telling me that, oh, looks like I'm ready to get my flaps down. Oh, 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 my speed's getting a little slow. All right, air traffic control told me to change the frequency. I'm reaching over, and I'm, I'm changing my knobs for my frequency. I'm trying to keep my 600 feet per minute. Oh, oh now it's starting to get slow. Oh, now I need my next notch of flap. Oh, I've got a timer going, I'm, okay. As you can see, it starts getting overwhelming immediately. And we run into a situation where we basically have so many tasks going on at the same time that we're unable to do any of them well. Now, there are plenty of veteran pilots out there that are like, well, that's just routine. You know, if you do it enough times, it's not that difficult. That's true. But remember, it just takes that one straw to break the camel's back. So if we're in a situation where everything's you know, going our way, you know, we have control of the airplane, we're feeling pretty confident, you know, we've got it all good, all of a sudden something happens. Uh, the person next to you throws up. Um, for those of you who fly instrument approaches on a daily basis with non-pilot folk in the front seat, uh, you'll discover that their tummy it doesn't work well. Uh, as a matter of fact, it will surprise you how many times uh, they will need to use the relief bags for the purposes of not making a massive mess in the uh, front seat of the airplane. So that happens, and all of a sudden, my perfect skill of uh, being able to manipulate all those individual things at the same time are completely thrown out the window because it just took that one little thing to throw me off concentration, even though I was completely in control. So what we need to do is we need to eliminate as much of those things as we possibly can. So if we throw the passenger out the window, problems, no, that's not what I'm referring to. So what I mean by that is knowing the performance of the aircraft. And that's really the focus of the first video here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and capture a couple numbers that we're gonna need to use so that we can safely approach with the aircraft. Now, if you've ever seen an approach plate and you went to the bottom right left corner of it, you'll probably discover there's this little thing that says final approach fix to missed approach point. And it'll describe how fast the aircraft is traveling and how much time it's going to take to get to that specific spot. We need to know this because these speeds are written here on here to help us predict the speed we need so we know how long it's going to take for, in our case, if we were in Hartford, to get from the VOR DME, which is our final approach fix, all the way down to our um, Zovox or MAVD, depending, of course, on which approach we're using. If we're doing the circling approach, it's a little bit higher. Zovox, assuming we have a DME, we can go all the way down to about 580 feet, which is... <laughs> This is kind of low. There's a city right next to there. So uh, that always impresses me. But we need to pick one of these speeds. Now, when it comes to picking one of these speeds, it's all about picking the one that allows you to dirty up the plane without thinking about it. Now, the reason I say that is our Mooney, for example, we can deploy gear at 120, but we can't deploy flaps at 120. At 90, we can do gear and flaps. So this is probably going to be my approach speed. Naturally, if you're in an aircraft where this is your stall speed, don't pick that speed. You're going to have to go in the middle. Now, some of you are like, well, I can just do the math real fast. I'm looking at you in the eye right now. You can't do the math when you're doing this all by hand. Maybe with an autopilot you can pull it off, but trust me, you're never going to be able to crank those numbers out fast enough 
Or if you're in a situation where you're like, oh, I'll just pre-calculate it, that's fine too. But you've got to remember that this might not be the approach you end up flying. You might be at a different airport because you had to divert. Again, look at how terrible these minimums are. Just think about that for a second. All right, let's get back to the plane. So we need to know roughly what 90 knots is power-wise. So um, how are we gonna figure that out? Well, there's gonna be two different things we're gonna need to know. We're gonna need to know 90 knots level, and we're also going to need to know 90 knots dirty, and we're also gonna need to know 90 knots in a descent. Now, a lot of airplanes, uh, the Mooney in the real world, the notwithstanding here, uh, believe it or not, the power for the level and descent are actually almost the same, especially if you're doing about 500 feet per minute. So let's go ahead and figure out what 90 knots is. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll pull the throttle all the way back. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll look out the back window. I'm gonna go ahead and pop out my speed brake. Now keep in mind, the Mooney is a rather unique beast because we have these lovely speed brakes here and uh, they do do a nice job of kind of getting us slowed down a little bit. Go ahead and look back out the front here. We wanna be very careful here because we don't wanna speed brake ourselves past our 90 knots. So I'm gonna go ahead and retract the speed brakes. Uh, we're a Mooney, so I notice it takes no effort to go ahead and uh, start not slowing down here. This is why I like the speed brakes here. Now for me, on the real plane, it works out to be about 13 inches of mercury. It's gonna hold us steady at 90 knots here. But the simulator, I'm guessing it's gonna be closer to 11 or 12. The induced drag is just not the same in flight sim as it is in the real plane. All right, we'll make sure our RPM is all the way forward. And we're starting to get a little high on the nose here. And yeah, we're on the wrong side of the power curve. I can feel that very distinctively. There we go. Let's go pop it back down to about 11, 12, 13, somewhere in there. Imagine what it's going to work out to be. Yeah, about 11, uh, about 11 inches. Perfect. So again, you want to come down from it. You want to be very cautious here. So at about 11 inches here, uh, Mercury here, we can also see my RPM has dropped significantly. Uh, the real plot, the one I fly, of course, is a different version of the Mooney. Um, your RPM would be a little bit lower here, but um, you can see. So at uh, 11 inches of Mercury, notice, by the way, how that nose started to pitch up. It's one of those things where autopilot makes some of these things easier, makes some of these things a little bit harder. And you can see we're starting to settle pretty darn close. That's about 95. I'm actually going to pop out the speed brakes a little bit here. Go ahead and cancel them. In the Mooney, you get a very distinctive pitch change when you uh, do the SP brakes, so you gotta be careful with that. All right, so we're looking at about, uh, that, that's not too bad there. I'm uh, kind of chilling right, uh, I'll call it, yeah, it's about 95, so even this is a little fast for us. But the other thing you have to keep in mind is because of our altitude right now, you'll notice that our ground speed is also a little high too. That means we're gonna be early. So now some of you are like, well, why don't you come down to uh, 10 and a half inches? Well, 10 inches is pretty low for this airplane. So if I ever actually pop those brakes out again real quick, Again, the real one just gets draggy. It's nothing like this. Cancel that out real fast. Eh, I think that's gonna be too much. Yep, see how we got on the wrong side of the power curve again? Yeah, so we're gonna settle with 11 because it's the only speed that's gonna give it to us. Now this 11 inches of mercury plus maximum RPM, if I actually scroll my head down here, you can see that set. Um, this combination here is going to be our approaching the final approach fix power. Uh, the reason we need to know this one is this is the one that's gonna enable us to quickly transition into the gear plus flaps plus everything else. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna order up a turn to the uh, east here. Uh, the reason being, of course, is if you look out my window right now, you'll realize that there's a, <laughs> a lot of mountains in that direction and we're about to enable a descent here. So we wanna kinda of be careful. Let's go ahead and flip on the old heading hold. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. And we're gonna come over to the east so we can do the next stage. So the next stage we need to figure out is going to be the stage where we begin our descent. Now, when you're doing a non-persistent approach, that transition between we're going straight and we have flaps and gear and power and speed and I'm in timing myself super carefully at a certain RPM is going to become very, very critically important for us all at the same time. So I'm just gonna level myself off in this direction. I'm just gonna keep my 11 inches here. So what we're gonna do is order up a descent that's going to be exactly about half of our approach speed. Now, you know our approach speed is about 90 knots is what we're hoping for here. So we're gonna go ahead and set our descent to be about 450 feet per minute, about five 500 feet per minute. Generally, it's never quite 500 feet per minute. It's usually a little tiny bit more, like 600 feet per minute. And the reason for that is, is if you take a look at our actual chart here, let me go switch over to it again real fast, you'll notice that when we hit Zovox, we have to be at or above 1,200 feet. That means if we get a little early here, let's say we hit at or above, you know, right at this particular position here, we're still fine. This whole 2.3 nautical miles, I can spend at 1,200 feet if I want to. But the important thing is if I get to 1,200 feet between Zovox and Mavdi here, that means I have less time to be looking for the runway for the purposes of getting ourselves back down on the ground. So again, it's those little teeny tiny things that matter here. So um, that's all set. Uh, aircraft's looking pretty good. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and order up, I'll order our descent. Uh, let's see, our descent target is gonna be a one, 2,000 feet here. And we're just gonna order up a vertical speed of, uh, let's call it uh, 500 feet per minute. 
it. So let's go ahead and call it in. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say engage vertical speed mode. There it goes. Well, we need a little more than that. There we go. 500 feet per minute. So now we need to find our next power combination. This power combination is going to be the dirty combination. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop down my flaps there. Now, whatever combination you use of flaps and gear for the purposes of doing your instrument approach is how you wanna get your next number here. So for me, on uh, this aircraft, uh, we actually usually fly about half flaps, most of the foot, and then we drop the last bit of flaps towards the end. Uh, for this demonstration though, I'm gonna do it completely dirty. So you can see at 11 inches, I'm actually still pretty close to 90 knots. Actually, this makes no sense to me at all. That would suggest my flaps have no drag. But um, I'm going to ignore flight sim for a second here because in the real Mooney, you would start slowing down. All right, let's see. So our aircraft is coming down at about, uh, I'll call it about 500 feet per minute. We're still about 90 knots, actually, we're a little fast here. And we can see that we're still at about that 11 inches of uh, mercury here for power. That's great news all around. That means that that magical 11 number that we came up with a few minutes ago is still usable, and we didn't even have to touch the throttle for the purposes of our actual approach here. Uh, that actually is great news. A lot of times you don't get so lucky. If you're in something like a really, really high drag aircraft, especially like a twin, this number will be significantly higher than it will be in the other one. But you can see here, still at 11 inches, but I'm still at that magical 90 knots. And, and this was the important part, the aircraft is now all dirty and ready for our landing, which means is as I'm approaching to landing, I can concentrate on the lateral navigation. Now, one thing people always ask uh, when you're in a non-precision approach, and when we demonstrate a non-precision approach for you, you'll see this too, is if you start to get low, um, do you um, pull the nose up? No. If you pull the nose up, you will slow the plane down. That will actually ruin all of your timing. Uh, one thing you're starting to notice here is now that the aircraft is completely settled, I've actually lost a lot of speed here. Uh, that does not surprise me. Again, we're fighting an interesting uh, drag model here, which seems to be very, very dependent on uh, what kind of properties we have. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of power here. Yeah, we're getting bounced around, but uh, welcome to instrument approaches, everybody. That's what it's like. There we go. Like I said, in the real plane, it's about 13 inches at this step. All right, woo. Yeah, we're having a little bit of trouble there, but again, this is uh, ideal conditions. Yeah, that makes a little more sense. I would expect that number to be bigger than our a level approach. Cool. So now we know that during our initial approach, uh, we want to do 11. When we start our descent, we want to do 12. So how will we put this together? Well, now we know that when we're going to come land the plane, we can just set our power immediately and go ahead and make our approaches. Now, what I'm going to do for a second here, is just to show you an important skill here, is I'm going to disengage the automatic pilot. Whoa! Look at the trim on this thing. I'm gonna let the descent continue here. This looks pretty good. And what I'm gonna do is demonstrate what happens if you start to get a little low. Don't touch your pitch. If you pull this nose up, notice your airspeed drops off immediately. If you get a little high, watch what happens if I push the nose down. No good. So instead, what you're gonna do is since we know the number that we need to use all the time, we can just use that throttle now as a way to tweak our vertical speed. Once we've got everything nice and settled and happy, if I were to go ahead and apply a little bit of power here, uh, you'll notice that my vertical speed is gonna basically uh, come up a little bit. And then of course my airspeed is not gonna change that much at all. Uh, once we've corrected, since we know that the magical number is going to be 12, we can just pull the throttle right back to 12 and we're exactly back where we were just a minute ago without having affected anything else as far as our actual approach goes. So those are the most important two numbers that we're gonna to need to know. Now there's gonna be a lot of variations on this theme. Uh, some aircraft, of course, if you don't put your landing gear down to the last second, for example, if you're in a big twin plane, you're gonna have a different combination of numbers here. And it could even be three or four. The important thing is you know what those numbers are off the top of your head. It's not something you need to think about during your approach so that it makes it much, much simpler. In the next video, we'll actually see a very, very basic visual approach using this exact same technique, and you'll understand how it all comes together. Enjoy.